Hello everyone! This video is about vitiligo, we'll focus on current hypotheses about the causes of vitiligo, I will also give a brief introduction with some general information on vitiligo. So without further ado, let's start. So firstly, what is vitiligo? Vitiligo is a long-term skin condition characterized by patches of skin losing their pigment. So this is a cross-section of skin. We can see it has three layers, and at the bottom of epidermis there are melanocytes. Melanocytes are cells that produce melanin, the skin pigment. In vitiligo patches there are lots of melanocytes. Actually, some publications claim that few melanocytes are still present in the affected skin, but they do not function properly, which comes to the same thing. The skin in the affected area is not pigmented. Is that the only symptom of vitiligo? Well, yes, in vast majority, but uh, there exist publications claiming that in sporadic cases vitiligo might affect vision and hearing. Why? Because melanocytes are also found in the inner ear and inside the eyes. So this is some review about prevalence of impaired hearing and vision in patients with vitiligo. So let's start with vision. In the eye, melanocytes are present in the uveal tract, which is made of iris, choroid and the stroma of ciliary body. The melanocytes in iris protect the eye against UV radiation. The review says that the association of vitiligo with inflammation of the uveal tract is well established. Inflammation of the uveal tract is called uveitis. Symptoms of uveitis include eye pain, redness, sensitivity to light, and blurred vision. The review claims that 5-8% to of vitiligo patients can have uveitis. Moving on to hearing, melanocytes are present in the inner ear, which is marked in yellow on this diagram. Unlike with vision, the correlation between hearing problems and vitiligo is rather unclear. There exist publications that seem to found the correlation, but others do not support the correlation between hearing loss and vitiligo. What is however true is that vitiligo sometimes coexists with other autoimmune diseases, and these diseases might negatively influence hearing in the patients with vitiligo. So we are almost done with the introduction. I will only mention that vitiligo affects about 1% of the population and occurs in all races. Some researchers claim that the prevalence of vitiligo in India is somewhat higher, about 3%. And lastly, vitiligo tends to develop at a young age. So now we can move on to the causes of vitiligo. There are three different popular hypotheses amongst researchers regarding causes of vitiligo – genetic predisposition, autoimmunity, and oxidative stress. What this diagram shows is the number of publications published each year from 1990 to 2015 on each of these three topics. I am not going to look at neuronal hypothesis because so far the evidence supporting this hypothesis are very scarce. So in this part of the video I'm going to present you with some evidence supporting each of these hypotheses. But before we move on, please bear in mind that these hypotheses do not need to be mutually exclusive. Let's start with autoimmunity. Autoimmune disorders occur when immune system attacks the body's own tissues and organs. In the case of people with vitiligo, the immune system appears to attack the pigment cells, melanocytes, in the skin. The facts that support the immune hypothesis are as follows. First, in vitiligo patients, melanocyte-specific antibodies are present. What are antibodies? Antibodies are created by immune system to target foreign invaders, like bacteria or viruses. But in patients with vitiligo, there exist antibodies against melanocytes, the cells that produce skin pigment. Secondly, vitiligo quite often coexists with other autoimmune diseases. By the way, what are the statistics about vitiligo coexisting with other autoimmune diseases? Well, some papers quote a number from this paper, which is 55%, but when you look at the original paper, it is based on 80 patients selected from departments of medicine at the University of Ankara. It is not a well-advertised nationwide online questionnaire, for instance. I cannot but wonder that saying 55% of vitiligo patients have coexisting autoimmune diseases does not reflect reality. I suspect that the number is too high, possibly way too high, as the sample of patients taken to the study was relatively small and biased towards more severe cases of vitiligo. 
So coming back to the main topic, the third argument supporting immune hypothesis is that immunosuppressive agents are a well-established method of treating vitiligo. And lastly, a large fraction of genes that have been shown to be relevant to vitiligo encode proteins involved in immune regulation, which leads us smoothly to the second cause of vitiligo, genetics. An observation supporting this hypothesis comes from the fact that quite often vitiligo patients report an affected relative. In the earliest publications, this number varies from 11 to 38 percent. Later, the development of DNA technology allowed to identify, so far, approximately 50 different genetic loci that contribute to vitiligo risk. However, the concordance of vitiligo in monozygotic twins was found to be only 23%, indicating that non-genetic component also plays an important role. So let's move on to the oxidative stress. I found this paper from 1988 that puts forward a hypothesis about oxidative stress. I'm not sure if this is the first, but most likely it is one of the first times when detailed hypothesis about mechanism of oxidative stress was formulated. In this particular case, the oxidative stress was proposed to be caused by elevated levels of hydrogen peroxide in the outer layer of the skin. This researcher, a molecular biologist, kept working on her hypothesis 10 and even 20 years after it was initially proposed. The slight problem is that Professor Karin also patented a cream that apparently led to amazing results in the clinic Professor Karin was working. This cream was meant to reduce oxidative stress in the skin. Fifteen years later, the cream was finally got hold of by an independent research group and it was shown that it does not work. I have entire video on the topic, the link is below, so there is no point to expand on this here. The only treatment that seem to bring some results that are statistically higher than placebo are antioxidants. Ginkgo biloba was shown to have relatively small but positive effect, and other plant extract and combination of vitamin E and C and polyunsaturated fatty acids was also reported to be actually quite promising when combined with phototherapy. The bottom line is that, since the initial development of oxidative stress hypothesis, significant number of papers have been published on the topic. But so far, oxidative processes in the vitiligilous skin are not understood well enough to result in breakthrough in a treatment of vitiligo. What it seems to emerge from the literature, however, is that oxidative stress might be the initial triggering event to precipitate vitiligo. We can see that, for instance, in this paper from 2004, 2007 and 2012, and this leads us to so-called triggers. So it is well known that psychological stress, pregnancy, any type of skin injury or irritation, and contact with some chemicals might trigger vitiligo patches. Vitiligo found at the site of injury is called the Kobner phenomenon, and according to some publication I found, this phenomenon affects about 30% of vitiligo patients. To sum up, vitiligo is currently thought to be caused by a combination of factors, including genetic predisposition, autoimmunity, and oxidative stress. Genetic predisposition and autoimmunity are linked, as we read, about half of confirmed vitiligo loci encode immunoregulatory proteins, but the fact that prevalence of vitiligo among monozygotic twins is only about 20% indicates the importance of non-genetic factors. And although oxidative stress theory is not, so far, supported by genetic studies, there are some emerging evidence which suggests oxidative stress might be the initial triggering event to precipitate vitiligo. That's all I have for you today. I hope it helps. Thank you for watching. Bye!